From time to time here at Tech Yes City, I get people who give away their old PCs to me. And it's most likely either something's broken or something's missing. But over time, if you can accumulate more of these PCs, then chances are you can actually make a PC that will boot up and play games. And one of those games in particular is Escape from Tarkov. You guys have uh, requested on Twitter that I test this game out and see if I can play it on a budget. Now this is a game that's on PC in closed beta at the moment and the only way to get closed beta access is to buy the pre-order for $45. And they're stating that the system requirements, the minimum system requirements, are that you need either a Core 2 Duo or an old Phenom and six gigabytes of RAM and also a graphics card that needs one gigabyte of VRAM and DirectX 9 support or better. So today we're whipping up one PC and we're pulling out components out of another. For instance, this one I got here for helping someone out install a new Ryzen system and it has an FX 8120 inside. I've also pulled the memory out which it had 32 gigabytes and I'm going to be putting in eight gigabytes of RAM as well as pulling out an old power supply from an old PC that I had that got donated as well where it wasn't working but I managed to pull this power supply out, clean it up already and test it out and it's giving out a signal. Then I had this other PC that had two 500 gigabyte hard drives which I'll hopefully be able to put in RAID 0 and then we've got a GTX 660 Ti which actually has two gigabytes of VRAM on board. So if everything goes to plan after we finish up cleaning up these components, I'm gonna boot up Tarkov and see how it plays on something that essentially is free. If you've just built yourself a gaming PC and you get this annoying Windows 10 is not activated message in the bottom right hand corner, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys will fix that straight away. You can go onto the website, quickly put in the coupon code TYCSK and get a 12% discount and that means you'll get a Windows 10 Pro X64 license single end for as low as 13 USD. I'll put the link and the coupon code in the description below so you can quickly get started. And here we are now at the first phase of cleaning everything up and we changed the thermal paste on the CPU with the CPU cooler underneath. We also changed the uh, thermal paste on the 660 Ti that we're gonna be using as well. So it's finally time to put this thing together. It did take a lot longer than I thought, but that's mainly because there was like some weird sort of calcium buildup on the top panel and the front panel where it took me a little while to get all that off. but. Regardless, hopefully we'll have a PC that is looking like it's brand new after we've finished putting this thing back together. So let's get on with the show.
So the PC is now finished. It's up and running absolutely fine. Do let us know in the comments what you think about this PC right here. And of course, the cost of this build. But I actually did cheat a little bit and I added in an SSD, a 120 gigabyte solution, just to make the whole installation process a lot quicker. And so I don't have to mess around with things, especially when it comes to fine tuning overclocks. And we also managed to do a dynamic RAID 0 with those two 500 gigabyte hard drives in Windows 10. This allows for this drive to now appear as a one terabyte drive in Windows. And then the graphics card and the fans are really quiet on this build, which is something I'm pretty impressed with as this whole build is running right now. The side panel's off and the noise is quite low. Though in the meantime, I did manage to do a bit of overclocking and tuning on this system and I got it to four gigahertz on the FX8120. Now, people may say that this isn't that great of an overclock and honestly, it isn't. But considering we're using a budget power supply, which has a single four pin connector, which I've then used and converted to an eight pin just to get the extra length so I can do a little bit cleaner cable management. Now the memory, we're using four two gigabyte sticks as we said in the intro, and we managed to get these to a CL9 1600 megahertz, which is quite decent. And that's going to provide along with the CPU, a decent level, much better than that of stock settings out of the box. So hopefully we'll get a smooth experience on these two, coupled with, of course, that 660 Ti, which is actually running really quiet and is looking pretty good so far. Though the only thing left to do now is wait for Tarkov to finish installing, and it's actually not that big of a game. It's only 17 gigabytes, which even on my internet should only take another hour or two to finish installing. So we'll be up and gaming and getting some FPS figures for you guys very shortly. So do let us know in the comments section what you think about this build so far and the tech yes loving was it up to your standards. And here we are with our free PC and the FPS figures and Escape from Tarkov. Now, I'm going to say straight away, this game is really exciting. It's the first game I've played in a long time that is just unique. It's got a skill curve. It also has a learning curve. And you get into the game and you're like, wow, I can then do this. And you can disassemble guns and reassemble them and put different parts on things and different ammo and all this kind of stuff. And I realized this is just like a whole different world in terms of an FPS game. Not only is it a cool survival game, but there's so many elements that you have to learn in order to get better at this game. I can see that straight away, even only after playing it for like a couple of hours where I just started off and started getting into the groove of things when I was just playing in PVE mode. And mainly because I think you have to learn the maps first and learn all the critical points on those maps because I didn't even have like an actual listed map to pull up and learn where to go. So that was, uh, was pretty funny though, but I ended up uh, playing straight away and losing all my loot because I played PVP. And then from there, I kind of just figured out, okay, I can buy back and uh, get my things back and then start playing again. And uh, in the process though, I did record the FPS figures. So on this FX8120 system, there's some good news and bad news. And the good news is that it can play the game um, at 1080p with the 660 Ti. We were getting a 61 average FPS when we did uh, apples to apples benchmark with a 1% 0.1% low of 13 and 12. And then there was this setting that really ticked off my curiosity. 
and that was the use only available physical cores. This is on by default, and when we turned it off, we could see that the uh, load on the uh, CPU threads themselves were then dispersed more evenly, but the average FPS dipped as a consequence of this. So we went from 61 then to 56. So leaving this setting on out of the box is most likely going to be beneficial. Though when it came down to it, I did do a big benchmark where it ended up averaging out over like a randomized uh, benchmark. So that physical cause test that I showed you was just apples to apples, where it shows that you will want to leave this setting on. But when it came to a big benchmark, I averaged out about 53 FPS. And so this game does struggle a bit on the FX8120, especially in relation to those uh, stuttering and 1% 1% lows. Though the bad news is, and we're gonna start going into the bad news, is that I couldn't overclock this system. And the reason being is the uh, power cable going to that CPU and the power supply used. When I locked in that four gigahertz, it seemed okay at first, but when I jumped into Tarkov, like the whole system just shut off and it would repeatedly do this after um, just trying to play the game. And so I had to revert everything back to stock and then it just managed to play the game fine. So I couldn't really lock in any overclocks. The power supply was limiting our ability to do that, even to extract a bit more performance out of it, where I definitely feel like a setup like this could get 60 average FPS and quite smoothly. Uh, so you don't need the latest and greatest hardware to play Tarkov. Like a 660 Ti surprisingly is actually fine for this game too, if you don't mind dropping the settings a little bit, because when out of the box it defaulted to high settings, we're only getting like 30 FPS and the 0.1% and 1% lows were horrendous. So you would not want to play this game on these settings. Uh, though that being said, if you could get something like a GTX 780, for example, with three gigabyte VRAM buffer, or even like a 7970, and maybe like an X3470 Xeon or an i7-2600, you should be having a very good experience on this game at 1080p. It should be a really smooth experience. And uh, the settings we had here today will give you a playable experience. And I'm really happy with a free PC, but I feel like I could have got a lot more out of this system if I had a better power supply. So that being said, that's the sort of drawbacks of putting things together for nothing, but at the same time, we still have a PC that can play Tarkov, and it's actually a really exciting game. I look forward to doing more content for you guys with this game. Say, for instance, if you guys wanna see a really good uh, balanced budget gaming system for this game, then I can make that happen, because I see this game getting only bigger and bigger as the player base is just growing. And the good thing is they've got servers in Australia as well, so I could get like 20 ping to uh, Sydney in Australia, which is really good because a lot of big games that come out, they don't even have Aussie servers and that really ticks me off. Anyway, with that aside, hope you guys enjoyed the free Tarkov gaming PC here. We just put things together and the base of it is, is that if you guys can help people out, then I, a lot of people are gonna be willing to give you those older parts and uh, help you out in exchange. So for instance, I see a lot of people on Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree and they advertise over the months, like I'll see all these different people because I guess their ads don't last long because they give up doing it. They'll advertise to build you a brand new PC with parts from the store and they'll charge like 50 or $100 for their service to do it. The problem is they're advertising that on Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace. And when people see that, they're already seeing the competition on refurbed and used gaming PCs, which are coming in much better than the prices of new gaming PCs. And so they're basically advertising people like me who are flipping PCs on these marketplaces. And so my advice to people who want to get started out and don't have a whole lot and want to get into PC gaming would be to offer your services, say, help people out, say, look, willing to help you diagnose problems with your PC for free and just pay for my gas or pay for my food and transport. And you'll find from there, it'll open up a whole world of opportunities for you because a lot of PC problems that I fix personally, they come down to very simple things. Either the person's installed a heap of bloatware, malware, they need to reinstall their OS, or they need to do simple things like reseat the memory in order to get their PC working again. Or of course, there can be faulty hardware. And I find if I help people out, uh, there's either a, a lot of the times they'll give me older hardware that they had because I helped uh, in the case of this PC here today I helped someone out with their new Ryzen system and they said look do you want my whole old system and I said sure thing I love checking out the older gear and the other two candidate PCs as well I helped out another person 
get together an RX uh, 580 system. So they were really grateful for that too. So when I'm helping people out and doing things for people, they don't mind giving me their older hardware that they'd probably otherwise just chuck out. So if you wanna get into PC gaming and you don't have a whole lot, my uh, suggestion would be instead of advertising to build people brand new gaming PCs, I would advertise just to help people fix their PC problems. And as I said before, you'll find that it will just open up a whole new uh, world of opportunities where people really just don't mind giving away the stuff that they'd otherwise most likely chuck down at the tip. Because a lot of the times those same people don't want to actually advertise their PC parts on Gumtree or Facebook. They couldn't be bothered selling the parts. That's what I found. They'd rather just give it away or because they're just not worth their time even selling it. Though that's just my whole thinking behind it. If you guys have any tips or tricks of your own or you've got any stories that you want to share, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below where you can help out people who want to get into PC gaming and they don't have a whole lot. Because uh, I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Like the question of the day that we've got here and it's from Eli Restra and they ask, I have this PC with an RX 580 plus an i7-8700 and I have the same problem. How can I fix it? And they're referring to a yesterday's video, or actually video I did two days ago, with the Acer Nitro. And we found out it had a, quite a few problems with it that we did fix in the end. Though the biggest problem is just that you've got to add another stick of memory and update the BIOS and make sure after that, things should be running a bit better. Though in the case of that PC, we also uh, added a custom fan profile to the GPU and we also added an exhaust fan and that just helps with the temperatures and helps uh, keep everything running smoothly because with an RX 580 it does from the top of my memory put out more heat than a GTX 1066 gigabyte so with that in mind if the Acer Nitro which I'm guessing they've used another really cheap uh, GPU cooler on the GPU then I would uh, seriously look at getting a higher fan profile where the fan speeds ramp up a bit higher sure you're going to get more noise but you'll be getting more FPS or even then you may wish to get an aftermarket cooling solution for that graphics card like something like an Arctic Accelero 3 and then uh, replace that if it fits in that case. Anyway, hope that advice helps and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon and if you've also played Escape from Tarkov, let us know what you think of this game if you've got any tips and tricks for me too. Love reading thoughts and opinions all the time and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.